Alright, so today we're going to be taking a look at the new Surface, and by taking a look at I mean watching somebody else's YouTube video on the new Surface, because hell if I'm going to be walking in to buy one of these pieces of crap. So a couple of people have been asking me about this, and they said that Microsoft has gone down the rabbit hole to the point of being less repairable than Apple products. And I, I didn't believe it. I thought this is, you're kind of fucking with me. You have to be making this up. That can't possibly be the case. But it is the case. I was just watching a video, and you should go watch it on iFixit's channel instead of just watching it through mine. Be nice. I was watching this video, and it's, it's a joke. So let's just go through some of the stuff that they have going on here with the, the new fucking Surface. So. With a super slim form factor, 13.5. I don't care about that. Where's the. Getting into this new Surface laptop was a. Okay, so apparently you have to heat gun. You have to, first things first, uh, eh, you can't see anything. Really really nah. It's capturing the wrong monitor. One second, still a noob at the internet. Let's see here. So, screen capture. Capture, good. Capture my regular screen. Okay, so the first thing that you have to do with this piece of crap here is the top of it has to be pried off. Now this is this is a new one. This is a new one here because with the with, with with typical with Apple products, you only have to pry off and heat gun when it's an iPad. You've never had to pry off and heat gun a laptop. So Microsoft went the next level. Even with the new 12 inch, even with the new Retinas, you've seen in my tear where I was opening it up to show you what the inside looked like. It's annoying to get inside of it. It's annoying to remove that bottom case, but it is removable with a screwdriver and fingernails. Here you need a pry tool. And a heat gun to get off the bottom of the laptop. But wait, there's more. You had a you have to heat gun the laptop, which is great. If they included graphics chips in there, now you have a two for one repair. Really, really tough to remove. And they wound up. It looks like they ripped it and fucked it up. Let's see where they rip it and fuck it up. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> look at the backspace of the delete key. Now, you could argue that the girl doing this video didn't do it right, but like, let's face it, like, I, I, no, you're not supposed to, anybody that heat guns a keyboard is going to do that, so no hate on the person doing the video. I mean, you shouldn't have to heat gun the top surface of a laptop with plastic keys to get inside of it. This is absolutely retarded. It's fine. You don't need a delete or backspace key anyway, right? After much more cutting, tearing, frying, heating, and melting than we'd like in an opening Okay, so f first gluten thing, there's another gluten layer before you get to the inside of it. Uh, and here's the best part of it. Here's the best part coming up. Yeah. Where's the... Where's the soldered and drive? Show me the soldered in drive. And here we go. So RAM soldered, processor soldered, and SSD soldered. Now, at this point, I'm used to the CPU being soldered. I'm even used to the RAM being soldered. Fine. Soldering in the SSD is a dick move. The M2 slot does not take up a lot of space. It does not compromise storage uh, space. It doesn't compromise storage speed. It doesn't compromise security. It, it's, there's no point to solder in an SSD into a computer. But, and, and it's not, and this, this is the thing that really kills me. So let me, let me just try to use an analogy here. So I started my business with about $268. Now I have a store, several employees, and a good income. Now there, let, let's just hypothetically say I did a lot of hard work, I invested my money wisely, I provided value to my customers, and every single day that I came home, I took this knife out and I stabbed an adorable black kitten. Now, if you wanted to emulate my results and have a successful business and wanted to start with $200, which of those four things would you do? Satisfy customers, do hard work, invest money wisely, or stab a black kitten. If you went out there and did nothing but stab black kittens, you probably wouldn't be successful. See, there's this concept that what you, there's, there's this thing where everybody seeks to emulate 
the bullshit that Apple does without emulating the good things that they do. Because it couldn't be that Apple is successful because they have satisfied the needs of their customers. It couldn't be that having 10 years of a virtually virus-free operating system while Windows 98, 2000, Millennium Edition, XP Service Pack 1 and 2 are riddled with garbage. It couldn't be that they created an operating system that caters to creators by not crashing all the time, by having great creative software on it. It couldn't be that the experience just works. It couldn't be that it was intuitive and easy to use. It couldn't be that Apple didn't release abortions like Windows Vista. It couldn't be any of that. No, it must be that they soldered in the RAM and the SSD, being dicks in the repairability of your product. That must be why Apple is successful. And this is one of the things that, uh, that, that drove me nuts in this Michael Oberdick video that he did a few weeks ago, where my argument was that Apple made a very crucial, mis a big error that cost them a lot of money. And Michael's response is that, well, we're doing the same thing as a $400 billion company. So that must be right. No, it, it, it's not. You're looking at... Don't look at the things that a company is doing wrong and say, if we do the wrong things, then we will be successful. Apple is successful in spite of the fact that their products are irreparable. Apple has customers that like them in spite of the fact that their products are not repairable. Nobody buys Apple. Nobody shows up at the Apple store and waits in line for eight hours because it's like, yeah, we really want to solder it in SSD so that if, if the motherboard dies and my last backup was three hours ago, I lose everything I did for the last three hours. That's why I buy Buy Apple. Nobody buys Apple because they want a phone with touch ICs that fail. Nobody buys Apple because they want GPUs that fail. Nobody buys Apple because the process of replacing the keyboard is such a clusterfuck that rather than it taking two screws in three minutes, it takes an hour and a half and ripping out rivets. People buy their products in spite of the flaws, not because of them. And so many companies think that if we simply emulate Apple's flaws, without emulating their positives that we will have success. And that's also true with something like the, uh, like the, like the Samsung phones from a while back. Thank you to Kaladin. Once you go for a black kitty, you never go back. I agree. Black kitties are the best. Now, with the Samsung S5, you had removable battery. You had removable SD card slot. And you also had liquid resistance, which is great. And then the S6 came along. The battery was inside the phone, no SD card slot, and it's not liquid resistant. And a lot of people pushed back on Samsung about that. They wanted their liquid resistance. They wanted, you know, Samsung thought, if we emulate all the crap that Apple's done that's bad, then people will buy our phone. And that's not it. People bought iPhones because they were simple. People bought iPhones because they like syncing with iTunes and iCloud and all this other crap that I don't particularly enjoy, but that I can admit and understand why a lot of other people get it. People weren't buying the phone because there's no SD card slot. People buy iPhones in spite of not having an SD card slot. People were not buying the iPhone because it is not liquid resistance. Nobody ever walked outside and went, oh boy, it's raining. I'm so glad I have an iPhone so that if I take it out of my pocket, it'll be dead. No, 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 nobody says these things. So stop emulating the flaws in your opponent's products. It's not going to make your product any better. And frankly... Like, what, like, I don't understand where Microsoft is coming from with this garbage. I mean, even as a, as a Windows user, I use these machines because I, I am, uh, I'm used to them. And also because I just, I, I don't want to go through somebody else's way of doing things when going, figuring out the Apple way of doing things just means spending a lot more money and being restricted. But that being said... You know, why is it that Windows 10 scaling, like, you know, again, years and years into having 4K screens sucks with multiple monitors? And I've shown this in previous videos, like 4K here, 1080p here. People will go, oh, but the software developers are lazy and this, that, and the other. It's like, yeah, but that same software scales beautifully on OS X. Uh, why is it that there's just so many things with Windows that, that are just annoying? Like, uh, for example, for three months, my videos were just annoyingly out of sync. And then uh, on a brand new install of Windows 10, and then I revert, and then I go back once a bunch of updates are released, and, and, and it, it works. It's like, this, this shit doesn't happen on OS X. I, this is why people are using Macs. It's like, Microsoft needs to create some compelling reason to use their operating system and their hardware. Don't just emulate the bullshit that Apple did. Being incredibly expensive? Bullshit. Being uh, not repairable? Bullshit. These, these are not pluses. These, I'm just repeating myself at this point, so I'm just going to get to the chat. Read that and then get out of here and get myself a burrito. But it's like, it's just too little too late, you know? 
Even if you do get Windows 10 to a point where it's stable and my audio is always in sync and I never have to worry about something freezing in a live recording session, even if you got Windows 10 to a point where I don't have to worry about viruses and being hacked all the time, it's, again, it's, just, it's too little too late because OS 10 had all of that like 10 years ago. And I'll give them credit where credit is due. Again, even if Windows gets scaling correct, well... Who cares? My, again, OS X has had that for the last five, seven years, just fine. And it's the whole thing like with the YouTube versus Vidme argument. You know, Vidme does a lot of the stuff that YouTube does, and it has the ability to host videos without buffering, and it, has a, and it doesn't have a lot of restrictions, but it's doing what YouTube already figured out a long time ago. So even though it exists, there's no compelling reason to switch. People are not going to switch to a laptop that costs way too much for its specifications that's not repairable unless there's a compelling reason. Microsoft cannot simply match what Apple has done. Microsoft needs to one-up them in order to succeed. And there's no one-upping here. This is just pure copying. And it's not even copying the good shit. Again, you're, you're copying the bad shit. You're copying the lack of liquid resistance. You're copying the no SD cards. Like, you're doing what Samsung did with the S6, except you're doing it years later. Anyway, on to your chat and your thoughts, which means moving it over to the monitor that doesn't make my eyes bleed. Let's see. So the surface actually exists. I still don't believe that, eh. I feel weird making this video because it kind of goes against my theory that the surface is a hoax. I've never seen one in real life. I'm, st I'm still waiting to see one in real life. I hate Windows 8.1 at work. I have it. Hate the scaling. My laptop is full HD with two non-HD monitors. Yeah. If you have, the best thing to do, do what I have at work. I have a 4K screen. I have a 1080p screen that sucks uh, that I use for, for uh, chat. I have the 4K one I use for schematics. And then I have a 1600 by 900 that I use just for the microscope image so I can see what you see to make sure everything's in focus. Oh my God. I mean, it's just like dragging a window from one screen to the other is just pure, it's just, it's complete garbage. All right, and the next one. The surface is fake news. Yeah, again, I st until I see one of these things, I still think it's a hoax, but I've seen advertisements for surfaces. I've seen them on, on uh, phone booths and bus stops online, but I've never physically seen one. Are you still rocking an S5? Is the charging port cover held up? No, I broke that thing about three weeks after I got the phone. I got rid of my S5 when I got the Moto G, because my, uh, my battery was like completely destroyed. I could have bought a new one, but my Moto G arrived, and it wasn't scratched and slow. And the Moto G was actually faster than the S5. Most people don't believe that, but just through just basic scrolling and everything, just out of the box, it was nicer. Surface iFixit rating zero unrepairable. What was Microsoft thinking? Microsoft was thinking that if they copy all the things that, micro, that Apple does wrong, that they will magically make, that they'll just magically sell as many products. And it's like, it's just asinine. This shows that they can't put themselves into the role of their consumers. I agree with you. Uh. I got my first blue screen of death on Windows 10 due to Windows updates. Yeah, that. And does anybody remember the forced updates? So there were times where I was recording a motherboard repair video and my computer just fucking rebooted for updates. And then they created the creator's update, which is supposed to fix that. But the creator's, the creator's update is great. It just doesn't undelete the video file that's corrupt and destroyed that I'll never get to upload. So, you know, OS, the OS 10 thought this stuff through. I mean, they sat down and thought, hmm, do people exist that use our computers to record music? They do. So maybe our update shouldn't force the machine to fucking turn off. Yeah, like, you know, as a person that doesn't like or use Apple products, I give it to them that they're not that functionally retarded as the people at Microsoft. How much is a burrito in New York? 
about 12 bucks, $12 for a burrito. And thank you for the two pounds or euros. I keep forgetting how to tell them apart. I keep offending the Brexit people by not being able to tell the pound from the euro. I have to learn that before I get my ass handed to me. <sighs> would you recommend a Surface Notebook for programming? I wouldn't recommend a Surface Notebook if you got it for free to wipe your ass with. Maybe if you heat gun this material off, maybe if you heat gun this material, this stuff off, maybe it would make some good toilet paper. Because it looks like a, it looks like a solid, see this? Like it, it, you see how this material is, is kind of, it, it looks like a carpet, but it's kind of gravelly. It kind of, I feel like that would be, that would be perfect for cleaning every, like if you just wet it a little bit, I feel like this is the kind of toilet paper that you could use in just one wipe, be fine. Yeah, I could see this as something to wipe your ass with, but in terms of any actual use, it looks like a piece of crap to me. It looks like a complete pile of shit to me. It's annoying that you need to stop Windows 10 Pro to stop... It's annoying that you need Windows 10 Pro to stop updates quite often. Yeah, that's shit. Fuck. $12, what the fuck? Oh yeah, if you want to know what this, you, you want to know, Rick? Guess how much this dump costs. Ready? Those are euros. Oh, thank you. I learned something. Okay, so the two lines is a euro and the one line is a pound. Okay, now the Brexit people won't be mad at me. I've never seen Rossman say something positive. That means that you've chosen to look away from any video I've done whenever I've said something positive, which is on you. Why do you take donations through YouTube? Because I had people sending money to my business. So I have this random email account that I never check that I use to register my website. And people were actually doing Whois lookups and then sending PayPal money to that account. And then since I never checked that account unless my domain is up for renewal, then getting angry that I wasn't accepting it and then calling my business and then getting angry at the person on the phone because they thought that by not hitting accept on the PayPal donation that went to an account that doesn't exist, that I was saying, I hate you. So at some point, I just caved and gave up. I cave. And let's see. Four hundred a month. No. Uh, The creators update soft bricked my laptop. Oh, there's that too. And that's the other thing I got to give to Apple. So you know how there's that thing where you hold down Apple R and you can recover your operating system if it fails? Yeah, I've never gotten Windows to do that. Never. You know, you know when you boot up Windows 10 and you get a sad face? This has happened to me a couple of times on different pieces of hardware. It happened on my, uh, the Dell Inspirin, uh, I forget, 5378 something. I have it on my blog site. I but I, I went over it a few months ago. So on this Dell laptop I had, this happened while I was on vacation. Hope you found the touch bar schematic diagram. Thank you, but unfortunately, I haven't. I'm, I, I'm debating going to the Genius Bar for that. I'm going to go to the Genius. I'm thinking of, of going to the Genius Bar and filming it and saying, can you tell me where this probe point goes on one of your motherboards? Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe if I give him a nice tip, he'll, he'll let me know. Uh, so I've had this idea. What was I talking about? I was just talking about something I forgot. That's what this is for. Come on, Buffer. Here, Buffer. 
Ah, I'm trying to play a video and stream at the same time. That's a fail. You can't do that with New York internet. There were 10 cats in a boat and one jumped out. How many were left? None, because they were copy. <laughs> okay, kind of silly. Ah, the recovery shit. So when you hit Apple R on a MacBook and you want to recover the operating system, it'll, it'll actually recover it. It'll work. Whereas in Windows 10, if on my laptop, my desktop at work, and even once in this fucking ThinkPad, I've had it occur where I hit the um, power button, it, no, I, I'm doing something, it freezes, I eventually could give up after 10 or 20 minutes, hit the power button, turn it off, turn it back on, I turn it back on, and then it has a sad face, and I had to turn it off because it was frozen for five minutes, and then I try, it tried that thing where it says you can either do an in, a reinstall where it saves your data, or you can try to fix it, or you could do a clean install where you wipe everything. And I've tried all of the above, and it doesn't work. Like, at least when you hit Apple R on the MacBook, you can, there is a chance of recovery working. I've never seen a case of Windows 10 recovery actually fucking working, unless you have a USB stick that you made ahead of time. And let's face it, most people don't make those sticks or think about it until their computer is dead. And that happened to me while I was on vacation. And it's just, it's one of those things where, you know, I, I, I don't use Macs, I don't like Macs, but, like, there's enough shit on them that just fucking works that I see why people would buy them. And Microsoft needs to have all those reasons before they can release products that are, like you earn the right to release unfixable garbage. You earn the right to charge $1,600 for a fucking dual core laptop with an integrated graphics that doesn't have real USB ports. You know, like that, 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 that's not a, pri that, that's, that's a privilege, you know? It's like, it's a privilege, it's not a right. You, you have to earn that through doing something good with your products. And I just don't see how Microsoft has built up the capital with their users to be able to do this shit. I can see that there's a lot of angry Brexiters in the chat. I'm sorry I mixed up pound and euro. Ah. Why, did, why did you switch to Linux? Uh, I switched to Linux in 2003 just because it ran faster. And it, I, I liked XFCE. I liked being able to right-click a window always on top. I liked the fact that it ran a lot faster. I liked the fact that it never crashed. I didn't have to worry about viruses. I switched back in two th around 2015? Yeah, 2015, because the recording, editing, everything, it I was constantly fighting an uphill battle. In order, And it's gotten better. There's more capture cards out now that didn't exist back then. There's software that exists now that didn't exist back then. And there's software that existed back then that was unusable, that's actually usable now. But I remember when I first started trying to do these videos, it was just a complete nightmare getting anything done in Linux. And again, that's changed. And I, I could revisit it, it's just I don't really have a compelling reason to. But yeah, it, it was just, to do everything that I did, I would have to spend more time focusing on the operating system and the software than I did on the repairs and the presentation. And the point of the videos I do was the repairs and the presentation and you learning and occasionally being entertained. It shouldn't have been on this, so I gave up and went to Windows 8.1 and cursed, cursed a lot, but at the very least I could do my job. Just back up, that's on you. Yeah, but like, dude, I don't wanna make a USB stick, man. Like when I, when I buy a computer, the first thing I'm thinking of doing when I get that computer is using it, is being productive, is going over my inventory, is emailing clients and emailing vendors and dealing with regulations and fit, looking at my calendar to see that I have to renew something. And then, you know, and then it, and it occasionally entertaining myself. So you're right. People should back up and you're right. I should have made a USB. Like the first thing that everybody thinks about when they open a computer is making the recovery USB. Because that, that, that's what we really care about. That's how we want to spend our time as business people, as entrepreneurs. We want to make USB sticks for everything and then carry it with us all the time. No, like th this, is the men this is the mentality that got Apple where they are. This is why Apple, you, you have to understand that Apple being able to charge $1,600 for a, for a fucking piece of shit that has a dual core CPU and no USB ports, like you have to understand that they earned that through creating systems that actually work. Again, you're right. Oh, you could just make a USB stick. And, yeah, but I don't want to do that, man. People just want to fucking use their shit and have it work. And... I don't, and you know what, I'm not going to argue that that's a good thing. This shit, yeah, you should back stuff up, and yeah, I back my data up, I've got all my data backed up, but 
I don't expect that while I'm checking, you know, uh, Yahoo Finance and trolling someone in a message board and have an email app open for the mouse to just start glitching, to stop moving, for me to have to power it off, and then when I power it back on, for the recovery partition on my working SSD that has no corruption to be dead. That's Windows for you. That's fucking Windows. And just... Again, you know, you could always say you should back up, you should do this, you should do that, best practices, this, that, and the other. But you also have to understand that by saying that, but by saying that it should be the, the customer's priority when they open the box, not to enjoy the product, but to get straight on their chore of you making a USB recovery, that you are, you are creating a market opportunity for somebody who says that's not the way the experience is supposed to be. And that's like that mentality that is what creates $1,600 dual-core, 12-inch pieces of shit with soldered and SSDs. You wouldn't be able to abuse people like that if other companies weren't abusing their customers in a different way. Where do you buy the burrito? I can't tell you because if I do, you're going to start showing up there and just, no, no. That, that, that's happened before. Hmm. Yes, but the Apple R recovery will install the version of Mac OS X the piece of crap came with. You know what? If I'm on vacation, I would much rather have an unupdated, slightly older, out-of-date operating system than have a computer that's fucking dead. Hi, Blackberry. What would you rather have, girl? Uh. Hey, no, no, microphone, no, stop that. I do find it comp funny that companies don't ship a recovery driver disk. The internal recovery is useless if the drive crashes, and most support sites have 20 different drivers for different hardware config. It's annoying. Chris Long, you're right. And it, the hard drive doesn't even have to crash. That's the beauty of it. You could have a brand new SSD that has no errors, that works perfectly, passes all tests, and just doesn't want to fucking recover, just because it's Windows. You're home, which means you must have a new air conditioner. How is the walk from Home Depot? Do you hear an air conditioner? Do you hear an air conditioner? Thanks for the videos and cutting through rubbish in industry. Apple is my computing lifeline since Dell won't fix MOBO issue in 2010. Hmm. Lenovo has been pretty good with the issues I've had so far. I had a fucked up board in my T440P. They overnighted me a box. And then that box had overnight shipping to them, and then they overnighted it back to me with another motherboard. And free. Kitty, stop that. Why are your eyes black? To match my kitty. Okay. Blackberry does not like to eat blackberries. 
She is a carnivore. I have to go get an air conditioner before my cat loses another 30 pounds of fur on me. So that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something.